this is Keenan Idley with The Life of the Land is in Its Real Estate. And today I am lucky enough to have Colette Ching back with us to do a year in wrap up. Colette is the owner of Keller Williams, oh, uh, Honolulu, Maui, and the Big Island Division, and also the regional director with Keller, Keller Williams for 20 offices on the mainland. So Colette, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, gee, um, I am born and raised in Hawaii, so I'm actually from Hawaii, so just so people know that, I went to Sacred Hearts Academy, so I'm from Hawaii, I'm a local girl. I've been in real estate for over 30 years, and I love the business, it's an amazing business and industry, and, you know, really one of the things we're realizing now more than ever, right, in this um, uncertain times, unprecedented times, we're hearing that a lot in COVID, is that housing is an essential part of our life and so I'm, I'm privileged honored and blessed to be in an industry where we can take care of our people our people have a roof over their heads and it's been really great to me this industry so i love to give back and i'm excited to share with you what's been happening in the real estate industry yes so i know it's been totally unexpected from what we thought back in March, because I know I didn't expect the market to do what it has done. But you're going to kind of give us a, a national overview, just because you are on the mainland and kind of in touch. So what are we seeing nationally? Okay, so if you understand um, what's happening nationally, there are three areas in the economy we, we need to look at. Um, GDP, right? Gross domestic product. We need to look at the unemployment, which is huge. And there are certain numbers that we want to be under. And then we also look at inflation. And like six months ago, we were all expecting, oh, nothing's going to happen. No business is going to happen. And yet this is like the fourth shift I've been in in real estate. I'm not surprised this has happened because the government has done as good of a job as it can in helping us um, stimulate the economy. To a point where if you've been sitting in your home for the last eight months and you're not working but you're receiving stimulus money what do you think is going on in your head Tina what do you I've been in my house for eight months either I'm renting or I own and I have money and I'm paying off my debt because I'm not really working and I'm not spending what do you think is happening in the consumer's head right now yeah they're they're all looking to to move to buy up. And I, I think, you know, we have a large amount of condos here on island and very few single family homes on the market. And we're seeing people wanting to sell their condos and buy a single family home because they, they want more space. They want exactly a yard. Right. So that's what's happening nationally. We have seen historically, this is the best housing market we've ever been in since 2006. And I was in the market in 2006 before that, and that was a hot, hot market here in California. Everything was in multiple offers. There was very low inventory. However, there was one thing missing that we didn't have that this economy has created a demand for real estate and that is lowest interest rates you'll ever see. So what we're looking at 3.5, right? And if you've done a refi lately, you're looking at a 2.6. Yeah. So again, what's affecting the housing market is the GDP inflation and unemployment. And one of the biggest hit in Hawaii, as we all know, is the hospitality industry and the service industry. And yet what we're finding is because of that, those people may then go into the real estate business because we're in the service industry, right? And they may downsize to make sure that they have money for the next year because we don't know what's going to happen in 2021. So right now I can give you an overall that we've seen year over year of an increase of 8.6 home prices, 8.6 increase nationally on home prices, right? Um, months of inventory, this is the crazy part, everybody. Months of inventory nationally on average, less than 30 days. That is not sustainable. And for all of you out there, what that means is that a property will not stay on the market longer than 30 days and it's sold and there's not that much inventory. So if you've been thinking about, I don't know if I'm going to get my job back in the next six months or seven months and I'm having a difficult time paying my mortgage, 
that's when we've got to start thinking of ahead and maybe you're a seller in this market because you can max out and then use your money to survive and then maybe invest later on, right? We were talking about investors earlier. Yeah. So, so again, stimulate, stimulus packages help. I don't know how long it's going to help for. The interest rates are helping. We're seeing an increase in average price range, a short supply of listings or properties on the market and an overabundance of buyers. And here's another thing that's really needed and it's starting to happen. New housing development nationally is being built. So a lot of people now where they were stopping, not sure if they could continue building in March, they're building, they're finishing up their properties because now they're selling, right? So properties across the country are selling. You've got properties in the 200,000 to in California, ultra luxury, uh, ultra luxury is selling. So the hot price right now in let, let's say California is if you can get a house anywhere from 700 to 2 million, it's gone. And then you've got the ultra luxury, which is the five to 12 million. Those are selling depending on location. So it's interesting what's happening nationally. We're seeing an increase. And I think this will go on, Tina, until March. And then, I don't know. I got to tell you, I think we're, we're going to see if we can keep getting inventory and we keep interest rates low and the stimulus keeps coming in. I think consumers are doing something smart. They're paying off their consumer debt. Yeah. And now they're looking at how do I become more substantial and have equity? And so whether I'm upgrading or downsizing, you know, how do I secure my position in this economy? So, yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, it's what we're seeing here locally also. Well, it's and optimistic, but you have to be realistic. I think that's what you have to see is investors are buying a lot. A lot of people are moving out of areas. Um, again, taxes are going to be very different in the next two years based on, you know, what's happening, political environment. That's why it's not surprising Elon Musk move his manufacturing to Austin, Texas. So a lot of people are making moves to different states, to coming into Hawaii, to leaving Hawaii. So let's talk about the local economy. You want to cover that? Well, so we, we are seeing the same, you know, nationally, yeah. very low inventory. Um, our now, you know, our average uh, home price for November is is up, up, up. We're we're sitting at it's. I mean, I think it's probably an all time high of an average, a uh, medium of eight seventy. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. our days on market are they're they're flying off the shelves. You can okay. literally, as as a listing agent, you can pick when you want to accept an offer. Do you want to accept it in three days? Or do you want to wait a week? Um. So yeah, single family homes, it's, and I, I have agents calling me every day. What listings do you have coming? And I, I had one call me today and she's like, it's brutal out here. <laughs> so if you're working with buyers, um, they're having to go over asking, large earnest money deposits, anything, uh, well, we're paying. The market, right? Yes. Anything less than six months of inventory is a seller's market. Yeah, and we're <laughs> definitely under, under the 30 day. Or... Yeah, so, so just, just some statistics for you to know. Um, there's been the medium condo price in Oahu is 420,000. Okay. And then you've got, you're right on the money on the medium home price, which is 870,000. And here's the thing out of 303, 338 closed sales, 144 that were sold were on the West side on Oahu and a lot of active military buyers. Yeah. Right. So the Oahu market is hot. Average days on market at Oahu is 16 days. Oh, 16 yeah. days. Yeah, that's. So it, let's go to the, do you mind if we go to the outer islands? No, no, let's, I, okay. I want you to share. What are we seeing in Maui? So, so in Maui, let's talk about Maui. So ultra luxury is moving in Maui. And we talk ultra luxury in Maui. We're talking like 10 million and up. So anywhere 10 million, that's ultra luxury. Those properties are selling. What we're finding very interesting during this time, Tina, people are buying vacation rental properties sight unseen in Maui. They're just like, I visited Maui enough. 
I don't need to go look at the property. Prices are right. I'm tired of being in Idaho or Canada or Minnesota, and I want to get some warm weather. Some people are taking early retirement. They're coming to Maui. Single family inventory, no surprise to you, is very low. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting. Uh, half of the people buying right now are from the mainland. And even though Maui has been closed down till for five, six months, the vacation rental business, people are still comfortable in buying it only because they're probably going to buy something they're going to stay in as well, right? So they're not going to buy something now just to have a vacation rental. Being that it was shut down for six months, they probably lost a lot of money. So if they buy it, they have to be realistic and go, well, I'm going to live there too half the year, and then I can rent it half the year. And I got to make it affordable so if nobody comes in, I can afford that vacation rental regardless, yeah. right? So yeah, exactly. So that's uh, Maui. Uh, you want to jump on the big island? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's talk about the big island. So the lowest inventory ever in the big island in 23 years. Wow. 23 years, okay? And anything under the a 1 million mark on the west side is sold in a few days. So anything on the west side of, uh, of that's Kona side is sold in a few days, right? Um, medium average price is rising. Um, the COVID has actually accelerated everyone's comfort level, which I told you on Maui, as well as the big island, looking at property via Zoom or video sight unseen. Isn't that fantastic? Like yeah. you can go around a property with a video, show your client a house, they'll be in Canada and you, you've got your consumer app. So you can look at through that, right? If you're, you know, giving your consumer app away. Medium price range on the west side is 750000 and on Hilo, it's 326 wow. That's the wow. medium, okay? Um, and what, what I find interesting, Kina, the buyers that are buying or the investors that are investing, don't you think that now that people can work anywhere, they're like, why don't I work somewhere near the ocean, right? So there's more movement now because literally there's more movement in life. So we're think about it this way. We're digitally based and physically in the hand. So, yes, I, that's, we have, we have sold a lot of, of the homes sight and scene yeah. here also lots of zoom walkthroughs, Facebook live walkthroughs. Um, and we are selling to people who are working remotely, you know, they can now work, you know, in Koalina and support their business in San Francisco. So Absolutely. we're seeing that on Oahu. So what is, is the mainland with people who are working remotely and can now leave? What, what kind of impact will, do you think that will have? On well, just an example, I, I've already heard of several people that are moving, well, because California and Hawaii are one of the highest states for taxes, right? So you're paying a lot of, income taxes in these states. So I'm finding a lot of Californians are either moving, like I said, to Hawaii, or they're moving to other states, Texas, Montana, Idaho is a big one. Yeah. And they can get so much more for their money. So this remote thing is allowing people to move and companies are making a switch now. So I have a millennial that lives across the street from me in California, and he works for a company out of Brazil. And Brazil says to him, you can live anywhere that's north of this time zone. So now think about this when moves are based on time zone. So he's like, well, I think I'm going to move to Tulum, Mexico. It's in the time zone that they require and I get a property and I can work remotely. So it's really different what we're thinking about now in terms of how we move, how we buy and what we invest in. So. And yet housing is still very necessary. I would like to add the thing I would be very cautious of everybody is when you're thinking about this, if you are unemployed right now and you're not sure and you're in the food and beverage industry, you're in the service industry, especially in Hawaii, you gotta really look at the equity you have in your home. And I can't stress this enough, Kina, uh, we would, it is our responsibility as real estate agents to be the economist of choice for our clients, right? 
and to really let them know all the options that they have in case they have to sell. Because what goes up eventually will come down and what goes down will eventually come up. And so if this is a great time for you to sell as a homeowner and you don't have a job or you're not sure of your job position in the next six months to a year, you can always take that money, as I said, you know, go rent, buy something smaller until the market switches again and you're, you're more stabilized. We're not doing anyone any favors when we put them in forbearance or delinquency. And that's the national thing that I, I do want to share. Loan delinquency is actually at 3% right now across uh, nationwide. And that's really the most we've seen. And that's right now. In the height of the Great Recession, loan delinquencies when we had short sales, I don't know, were you in that market? No, that was right before I, I came in. So 9.5% so of loan delinquencies in the, the Great Recession, right? And that was the Great Recession was between, you know, the times of 2007 and 2012. I was in that market. That was the financial and the mortgage debacle, right? So even though you're like, well, loan delinquency is only 1%, you got to realize that there's going to be a third of the industries that we're in are losing 50% or more of their income. Retail will never be the same, right? Uh, hospitality, tourism won't be the same. And that's what we rely on, right? The financial sector is actually doing well. Transportation is actually down and that's airlines, you know, all of that. So we've got to really think ahead for our clients and the consumers out there. And if you're in a precarious situation where you don't know if you're gonna get any more stimulus and you won't, you have a mortgage and you don't know where the job market is gonna be, I'd rather you be conservative than uh, be extravagant. Right now is the time to pull back and really look at your numbers and you know get values on your home if you own one right now, just to know your, the financial position you're in. Yeah, so because we are seeing most of our uh, properties, we are coming on the market, they're walking away with, with a good lump sum. It's not always the case, but it, it's more often than not, they're, they're walking away with a lot more in their pocket than they thought they would. So, so let's go back to the forbearance. What kind of impact do you think we're going to see from that, you know, by the end of next year with all these people that took forbearance? What do you, you know, predict? They, they're going to need to have options because you don't want to put them in a position where they're just really that behind. So there are a couple of options that you have right now. And maybe that's something you, you brought people on the show on to talk about the exchanges, right? Reverse mortgages, right? So I, I think that we just have to watch really closely the industry that is not going to recover in Hawaii. And that's where you're going to see a lot of the consumers, the, the homeowners going for forbearance is because they were put in a bad, bad position. They didn't have enough savings. So we just need to have options for them. Um, and they need to be really clear about what they're doing. Should they do a reverse? Should they refi? Do they know what, if they're going to have a job in the next six months? You know, what does 2021 look like for everyone? So yeah, and that's that's the big question. And um, I know we don't have the crystal ball and, and everybody asks, you know, what are the rates gonna do for 2021? And, I believe that the rates are gonna stay like that until 2022. That's that's what I, I yep. keep saying. That's the, the feeling I'm getting from yep. all my lenders is that they're not really gonna touch the rates until 2022. And they're yep. never gonna just jump up. They're gonna creep oh. up slowly. Right. So. Um, and you so know the saying, right? For every 1% that the interest rate drops, that's the more purchase purchasing power you have as a buyer. So okay. if you're a first time home buyer and you've been thinking about buying, it's a great time to buy. And, you know, if you're, you know, if you're a veteran, you even have, you know, more opportunity to buy. And that's why all the military buyers are buying so much. Oh, yeah. So you got to take advantage in every market. There's an advantage for somebody. So, so what do you think? Um, Cause you know, I work with a lot of investors that do the buy and holds or the burr where they buy, they rehab, they re rent, they refinance. 
um, and then the fix and flip. So what are you seeing um, on, on the outer islands and on the mainland as the future for those that want to buy and hold or burr? Well, I, I are really there, think Are there a lot that, of opportunities? Yeah, there's lots of opportunities in different parts of the mainland. So people aren't flipping and doing that in California, but they are maybe doing that in Texas. Maybe they're doing that in Houston. Maybe they're, you know what I mean? They're buying in different parts where what I'm seeing a lot is people are going, well, I think I might move there in six years or five years. So why don't I buy something now, rent it out or work on it or buy land, hold, develop it. So there's a lot of that going on, but it's definitely, there's not a lot of flipping going on in, in California because people are, if they're going to buy, they're going to buy to live in. But there's a lot of new developments coming up, which is very interesting. A lot of work live spaces are happening here. So there's a lot of people looking for multi units where they can have income coming in while they live in the main house, right? So, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of new development. We're really having a shortage of properties all across the country. We need new housing everywhere. So, you know, I think that if you're an investor, I had a, a person once tell me a really famous investor who was really into buying properties and flipping them. He always says, buy at the funeral, sell at the wedding, right? So are we at the wedding or are we at the funeral right now? I think we're at the wedding. <laughs> I think, you know, so Definitely at the wedding. It. Yeah, so if I were you and you can max out what you're selling, sell it, hold on to your money. And then when market changes again, then you buy and invest and then either flip or start, you know, investing in areas that are up and coming. So, all right. So I just want to talk about, since you're talking about investors, in, in your opinion, because again, we don't yeah, have crystal balls. Opinion, it's <laughs> always our opinion. Um, yes. Do you think real estate is still the best investment? You know, oh, we hear absolutely. about Bitcoin. We did hear about, you know, gold and silver was big at the beginning of COVID. Robert Kiyosaki was like, gold yeah. and silver. Do you, what do you think about real estate as, as okay. the investment right now? So think about it. What are the three needs of a, a human being? They need food, clothing, and shelter. <laughs> so yes. Enough said. Yes. You can't eat yeah. the gold. That's why our business is considered essential, Kina, right? Yes. I mean, we are so lucky to be in a business where everything else shut down, but they're like, no, selling homes, buying homes, being in a home, essential. Yeah. So absolutely, Gary Keller has always said that. If you look at the MREI book, right? Millionaire Real Estate Investor, that's essential. It's the lifeblood of what we have. And what, you know, that's where you actually have the American dream where you can actually build equity. Bitcoins are great, you know, gold is great. Commodities, you know, stocks. But what has been and always will be the foundation of any big wealthy person and it's, Real estate is yes. in their portfolio. Yes, that's definitely what we have found um, with our own personal investment. Yeah, absolutely. For our own <laughs> personal, right? Yes. So with that, is there anything else you, you want to add that, you know, to give, give you know, buyers and sellers um, another little tidbit or? Yeah, I, I'm just going to say that I have been through, like I said, three previous shifts. This is one I have never seen before because of COVID-19. So I want you to be really conservative. Look at your portfolio, look at your finances. If you've been saving and wanting to buy, you're gonna buy more because the interest rates are low. If you're thinking I'm gonna sell in a year or two, you might wanna think about it now. If you're gonna take early retirement, that's another thing. I'm seeing people take early retirement. They're like, look, you know, I've been in my home for eight months, nine months, and I'm quite busy and I ha have a really good life. So how do you streamline and simplify your life and maximize your equity position? So what I would say to you is, again, we're at the wedding. So if you wanted to sell and you wanted to maximize your equity position, now is the time. If you want to buy and invest, Look at the areas where you can still get a good buy, upcoming neighborhoods, you know, in, in, in the mainland. Uh, set yourself up with Kina and she'll set you up with somebody in the mainland that can help you invest out there. So be really aware because this can last 
I'm going to say, right, this interest rate will last probably another year. Take advantage of it either way. Even refinancing is a great advantage. You, you can then preserve the equity and still stay in your home and have lower payments or pay it off faster. So just be really aware that this market will bring advantages to different people who are aware of their financial position and be conservative. Again, we don't know what's going to happen. I always like to say, buy like if you lost your job, you could still pay your mortgage, right? Yeah. Yes. And I always tell my clients, you know, what you're approved for and what you can afford are two different things. Absolutely. And so. we don't want to go back to 2007. We don't ever want to put our clients in a position of foreclosure and short pay. That's, that's not great. So there's a really great time right now to really assess your life personally, professionally, financially, emotionally. And what lessons did you learn in 2020? I think we can all agree that we live much simpler now yeah. and we enjoy different things, the simpler things in life. And like, it, it's funny, you know, like, where are you going? This is where we are right now. So do you need to buy those things? What about having an experience? What about investing in experience and your home is an experience, yeah. you know, upgrade, downgrade, move out, buy an investment property. The now's the time to be aware about what's next for you in your life, especially after 2020. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's always great to talk with oh, you. Thank you for having me. And I hope I added some value to you all. Yes. And thank you for joining us on the life of the land is in its real estate on Think Tech Hawaii. I will be traveling um during our next program so you will see a rerun um if those are such a thing <laughs> on think tech so i will see you all again at the end of january have an amazing holiday season and please reach out if you have any questions aloha